Hello my friends, welcome back to my channel and today we are back with another Dying Light 2 video. So everyone watching this video, please hold on to something because what I'm about to show you in this video might make you want to jump out of the window. So today we got an official announcement that Dying Light 2 Story DLC 2 got delayed till next year 2024. Also listen to what Techland had to say on this. With regret, we would like to announce our decision to postpone the release of Dying Light 2 Stay Human DLC 2 until next year. The choice to spend more time on development concerns a commitment to delivering the best story expansion possible with a new map and systems. As you can probably tell from the ongoing updates, we are still working on enhancing and improving Dying Light 2. Our main goal is to ensure that the game meets and exceeds expectations, yours and ours. We just have a few more things to add to the game to achieve that before releasing DLC 2. Please stay tuned for more information over the next few months, starting with a live stream on June 29th. This is when we will shed more light on the upcoming events and game-changing updates. So yeah, the DLC 2 is delayed and later this month on 29 June, Techland will host a live stream talking about the future event and updates. Which basically means that the parkour update will more most likely drop on that day. Because let's not forget that's the only game changing update Techland is releasing this year and what else can they talk about on that day. Also I'm not really happy that this delay happened but it's actually for the good at the end of the day. So good luck to the devs and now let's talk about the next big announcement. So yesterday at Summer Game Fest event Techland released a small teaser that talked about the future content of Dying Light 2. Now don't worry if you missed the event because in this video you will learn about everything that was shown in the teaser plus we'll also talk about some hidden secrets shown in the teaser. So let's not waste more time and talk about the future update. Also, if you're new to the channel, then make sure to subscribe to stay updated with everything Dying Light 2 related. Now, as soon as the teaser start, we are shown a barbed wire bat and anyone who's played the game before would know that the game has no barbed wire. So at first I thought it could be a new weapon from the future update and I was actually right. Because in the very next scene, we can see Timon Smegdala, the franchise director of Dying Light 2, reading a book. But that's not interesting. What's interesting is what book is he reading? So thanks to our modding community, we now know that he's actually reading The Walking Dead Compendium 1 book. This actually confirms that the barbed wire we saw earlier was also from the Walking Dead series. But I'm sure you may be asking who actually uses that bat? Well, I'm sure you remember Negan from the Walking Dead series using his signature barbed wire bat to finish all the survivors. So in the future, we're getting an event called the Summer of Horrors or a bundle with that weapon and probably an outfit. In fact, even the official Walking Dead Twitter account replied to this post talking about the upcoming update. This actually confirmed that it's indeed a collaboration with the Walking Dead series. But that's not it. There's actually another thing in the teaser that we all can see in the background that belongs to the Walking Dead series and will be included in the event. I'm talking about that katana we see in the background. That my friends is also a signature weapon of a known Walking Dead character. I've actually seen the whole Walking Dead series and I know it belongs to her. So we're basically getting a barbed wire bat, a katana and most likely an outfit. Unless it's only a weapon bundle then there won't be any outfit. So that my friends was the secret hidden stuff in the teaser. Now let's talk about what Demons McDowell said about the June update. Get ready for darker, more dangerous nights and roaming volatiles complete with improved parkour rolling out with the next update in June. Get ready for darker, more dangerous nights with roaming volatiles. This might sound like a small announcement, but the change is actually big. After numerous requests to make the nighttime more scary and darker, Techland is finally making the nighttime more scary, and the best part still is the addition of roaming volatiles. I mean, this game definitely needs roaming volatiles in the game. They need to be on the roof, on the ground, and sometimes inside the building. I honestly don't care, I just want them everywhere. Also, I hope in the future update we can have volatiles starting the chase. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I would love it to be like Dying Light 1 because that would be awesome. Next in the teaser, they actually mentioned the parkour update but said nothing about it. I mean, I've tested the early parkour build and provided my feedback on that to Techland but I'm not allowed to say anything publicly. But from the roadmap, one could tell that the parkour update will improve the parkour flow. Now, if you don't know what that means, well, let me explain that to you. So sometimes in Dying Light 2, when you're doing parkour and you build of the momentum you start going too fast but when all of a sudden you grab a rope you would realize the whole speed momentum it's all basically gone and that happens because your character slows down and that's because Dying Light 2 currently has animations for each parkour move with its own set of speed. So it doesn't matter how fast or slow you're running, some moves will still be capped with certain speed. There's actually a really good video from my friend Noviex on this topic, so you can watch that video to understand it fully. The link will be in the description. Now, in that short teaser, Timon also said that they will kick off an event season like we have never seen before. So I feel like they're going to bring a lot of new events for this game and they will surely be better events than before. Four. And yeah, obviously they're starting with this new Walking Dead event. So new changes to the event, this is something I really appreciate and that's why I love Techland because they listen to the community. 
Recently, I've really criticized them for releasing high price bundles that does not give you items worth the price. I mean, I made a video on this few days ago, so you can watch it and see what was wrong with the events and bundles. But hey, knowing that Techland is improving just made my day. So thank you, Techland. Now, that was everything they announced during the Summer Game Fest and sadly, they did not talk about the second story DLC 2. But hey, that does not mean we have no info on that. In fact, few months ago, Data Minus found leaks suggesting the new name of the DLC. And in the same leak, they also revealed the new biomes and the new special infected that we come across in the next story DLC. So the name of the story DLC is called The Frontiers, which was previously called The Blood Diamonds and honestly, I prefer The Frontiers over the old name. Also, in this DLC, you will have many biomes, at different locations in a single map. So here are the name of the biomes as follows. Unique wilderness, mountains, fields, lakes, swamps, fresh water, dark wood, regular wood, normal forest, urban, city center, outpost, village, and finally open space. Now these biomes are different from each other because of their habitat. And what's more interesting is that we have a lot of different zombies in different biomes. But hey, that's not it. The freaks of nature are also coming back in this DLC. Next, the story DLC will bring in some new guns in the game on public demand. So, so far it's a shotgun and a pistol, but maybe they will add more stuff in the future. Who knows? Now again, if you think that's it, then let me stop you there. Because if you guys remember, during the anniversary stream of Dying Light 2, Techland played a Morse code on the stream and later in Dying Light 2, people heard multiple Morse codes in different locations. So in the bazaar, the Morse code said, the woods are death. Then in the fisheye, the Morse code said, target down north northeast of Villador. Then on the stream and on the metro radio, the Morse code said, we found him, send help. So if you combine it all and then read it, then it says the woods are death, target down north northeast of Villador, we found him, send help. Now, the biggest question, who is sending this Morse code and who did the people sending this Morse code found? There are actually a lot of theories on that. The popular ones say that they found Tolga and Fatin, the twin brothers. The same brothers who escaped Haran using the train they built and they found their way in the Villador. Also, it's actually possible that these brothers are hunted because they are indeed wanted in this game. Then there's a theory about Brecken, but why would anyone hunt him? It makes no sense. But the popular theory that I believe in suggests that they actually found Kyle Crane. Because during anniversary stream, Techland revealed the canon ending of Dying Light the following, saying Crane got infected at the end and he actually spread the virus around the world. Then after that, in almost every stream that Techland dated, they put a hidden code somewhere saying Crane is alive. It's almost in every stream. Why would they tease him in streams that talk about Dying Light 2? It makes no sense. At first I thought it's a joke until they actually confirmed the canon ending and later when the data miners found a cut content from the game where Waltz was basically looking into the GRE computer for reports on Kyle Crane. I mean, why would GRE keep reports on Kyle Crane? Because the only way they can have reports on him is when they are experimenting on him. Which actually was confirmed in the cut content when Waltz said, what are they doing to him? Now, if you want to learn more about it and listen to the whole audio clip, then I highly recommend you to watch my video. The link for that video will be in the description. Now, there's a lot of theories on how Kyle Crane could end up there, but that has been discussed before on this channel, so I'm not going to repeat that. What I'm really excited to see is who actually returns in this DLC. I honestly wholeheartedly want Kyle Crane to be back. But honestly, I won't really mind if any other character returns, but if Kyle Crane returns, then the community will go crazy. Also remember, the cut content does not guarantee that it will happen. It's a 50-50 chance. So guys, that's everything we are getting in the future update for Dying Light 2. Let me know in the comments how excited you are for this new update and for this new DLC. Also, who do you think will return in the story DLC 2? Let me know in the comments and I'm gonna see you guys in the next video. Till then, stay safe and stay human.